Hey everybody, welcome back into the Letterman Lounge. It is a Monday in Columbus, Ohio, so we are in the greatest place in the world. Roosters, for a fun, casual joint, it's Letterman Live. The band is back together. Justin Zwick, Nicole Cox is back, Bobby Carpenter, Jeremy Birmingham, in full mm, glory, running I the North it. regalia, and I am Austin Ward. The Bengals are going to the Super Bowl, Burn. <laughs> I'm not even going to bring the wings out. He's going to cry. No, it was an emotional yeah, we don't, day. We don't want I, any I excuses. We don't want any excuses. Yesterday was a very emotional day. Cathartic, I mean, for Bengals fans who, I, by the time it was over and you knew they were going to the Super Bowl, all I wanted was San Francisco again at that point because I felt like it had all the recipe. Third of, times it, all, it all, all comes back to. Like, all the demons needed to be slain this time around. Uh, unfortunately, the, the Niners didn't make it happen, and. I don't know if that's the best matchup for the Bengals in the Super Bowl or not. I mean, obviously the defensive line of the Rams is, is pretty <laughs> oh, good. Oh gosh, uh, so but the poor so the Niners is pretty good as well. I just I think as a Bengals fan, I would have rather played against Jimmy Garoppolo than Matt Stafford and uh, Cooper Cup and those guys. So, uh, but either way, I mean, it's. Uh, I, I was watching that game on Sunday, and I thought to myself, I was telling one of my buddies who was over watching it, I'm like, heading into the game, I'm like, I have no expectations. I just want a game that sets up a classic. Joe Burrow, Pat Mahomes rivalry for the next five, six years. Like, that's what I wanted. And then the fourth quarter started, and it was tied 21-21. And he said, do you still want just a classic? I said, nope. Now we got <laughs> to win. Got to win. <laughs> so. How about when it was 21-3? Yeah. Honestly, it wasn't the 21-3 wasn't the problem. It was the 21-10. Yeah. And then at the end of the half, when mm. all you had to do if you're the Bengals there is make sure they don't score. And the, and, and the last drive of the – oh, An Andy Reid took the, care of that. Yeah, they, help, they helped out on that one. <laughs> and, then they yeah. and then they allow them to go 80 yards in five plays. And you're like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And then for the Chiefs to, to do what they did in those last nine seconds of the half was just shocking. And I was like, wow, that, that – and then you, you look at it and it's halftime, you're down 11, and they were down 11 to the Chiefs at half four weeks ago. And so you think, hey, you know what, why not? And then why not us? Why not us? And then the I defense believe. did what it did to Mahomes again in the second half. I mean, he they yeah. just absolutely invalidated him two games in a row in the second half and six points in sixty minutes. Like yeah. that's pretty impressive. That's Jimmy G level it's, quarterback play. <laughs> you well, could see it that he was he was a little. Uh, well, he gets, if Jimmy would have thrown that ball at the end of the half, people would be killing him <laughs> today. Here, here, oh, another check down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's the problem. Well, I don't, I don't, I like being aggressive and going for it. You had five seconds. You had enough to run a play. I like that play call, just not in that situation mm -hmm. because it took way too long. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. one step slant. It was really the yeah. only thing you had yeah. time for. Yeah. And you're trying to swing it out wide. Believe me, nine times out of ten, actually, I'm taking him every time. And nine times out of ten, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to cash in with Tyreek Hill one on one with Eli Apple in about five yards of space. Yeah. Only needed to get a yard. And it, Credit to Eli Apple. He stepped up there, stoned him as much grief as he has taken and as beaten down as he was. And the fact that he dropped a potential game-winning pick at the end that yeah. could have been housed. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, his boy Von Bell took care of it the next play. But, I mean, that, that was that was a play, the play of the game that turned that whole thing. You go down 28 to 10. With them getting the ball to start. With the them half. getting the ball. And I know that's what Andy Reid was thinking, like, we have a chance to bury, bury them. Yeah. We can go score here, score again. We'll be up 25, and they'll be done. And get a little greedy, well, make the wrong play call, and yeah. then all of a sudden. I was almost to the point where, like, let them score here if you're the Bengals, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. at, at a point in time, and then you get to the point where it's not. But it's like, man, you, this is going to get ugly real quick, and how about that? Hey, here's how the thing. How about them Bengals? I know you were looking forward to maybe watching, uh, you know, the Niners and getting yep. that third – you know, the third rematch, the three-peat, if you will, between Cincinnati. The and trilogy. The trilogy between Cincinnati and the Niners. But, I mean, think about this. I watched Nick Bosa in practice against Isaiah Prince. I've seen what that movie well, looked like. Well, we saw it in uh, in December. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to see that again? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> listen, at least Von Miller, there's, a little, bit of, there's a little bit of intrigue and stuff right there. I mean – Listen, they've got a great defensive line in with the Rams, but Nick Bosa and Isaiah, I would have lined him up every play. Now, I'm not switching sides. Just, We're going well, take this you back know that to the Nick day. would have spent the next two weeks in the meeting saying, uh, you want my practice tape for yeah, this? Yeah, let me like, show you this. I got this guy. I watched up. it. It was amazing. I'm in his head. Uh, Nicole, Rooster's probably really excited about the Super Bowl uh, Absolutely. orders for the Central yes. Ohio area now. Yes. we. Um, Are we, we serving tiger meat? Thing. What? <laughs> or maybe ram ram meat. ram meat. Yes. You don't want to eat. Be ram. You don't want to eat your own, yes. Bob. No, oh, I think ram. we just the stores have been just all the Bengals fans that we've grown up with. 
since 1988 when we've opened. It is just so exciting to see all of them. That was the last time the Bengals were in a Super Bowl, you know. It was. That was the year. I thought that was just a coincidence. I thought you said that for no. purpose of coincidence. No, that's, that's when we opened. So I just, seeing all these fans, because, you know, every Sunday, like when I served in the store, it was Bengals and Browns and some Steelers fans, you know? Um, and you'd have the randoms, like my family with the Texans. Yeah. And then, but. Slowly it, the Bengals fans died off over 30 years. I don't years. feel like it. I, I feel like. <laughs> what we just, we've known them for years and to see how excited they are. We just went into hibernation. We <laughs> yeah. we never died out. We just said, I'm not going to show this publicly because it was so. A 30 year hibernation. It was so hurtful because you just. He used do. to, re- so like, we, we would go, you know, traveling on the road and the Bengals would be, be NFL Sunday. We'd be driving. He would be, like, acting like he didn't care, not paying attention. We'd not watch a lot of games. He would even, like, try and hide his passion for the Bengals from me. No, because that's the thing. That, I think that's why it was so cathartic last night because for so many years we've been just like, you know what, why care about this franchise? And then you got a glimpse in the post game when Mike Brown's on stage. You're like, oh, oh this is why we don't care about this team. <laughs> like, come on, Mike. You, the Bengals are in the Super Bowl for the first time in 30 years, and you're sitting there talking about how great, the uh, how the Titans were good. Like, just talk about your team. Talk about the Bengals. Talk about Joe Burrow. Talk about Ed McPherson. Talk about Zach Taylor, who I still think is overrated as a, you know, I don't oh, think he's He might be the most overrated coach to win a Super Bowl, though. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and I'll take it. Do you guys, this goes back to my point, like, through the season of the Buckeyes, talking about how isn't there something special about the underdog winning? Like, if the Patriots were to go to the Super Bowl again, like, I wouldn't be that excited. I'm not a Patriots fan, though, and I'm not, I'm not necessarily a Bengals fan, but – I wore a Bengals sweatshirt yesterday because I just was so happy for all the fans out there. So I just think there's something to be said for the team that works so hard to get to. And the Patriots work hard, too, but it's just like an expected hard, you know? I don't know. Did you you hear Burrow after the game? Oh, yeah, I saw him. See what he said? Mm -hmm. I don't know why they try and claim. They asked him. (laughs) They where you finish. They asked him if the Bengals were for real at this point or if they were still a, like a, hmm. an underdog story. If they had to validate. He said last week he wasn't. And he said, well, we just beat the second best team in the AFC twice. twice. How about the Browns beat you oh, guys yeah. twice? See, that's like, didn't have, didn't have, have to play them. Josh Allen. See, but. that's the best humble brag that you can throw out there because it's factually accurate. And you can't you argue just, with it. You literally no. just put a period at the end of it, and it's not obloviating and talking about all this. No, nope. Well, we, we beat the team that everybody said was the best twice, and then we beat the Titans too. So his, you, you tell me. Yeah. His press conferences are are well w- worth tuning into <laughs> any time. I make too much money for these to be <laughs> fake. Not, <laughs> not just to see what he's gonna wear and all that, but he's that uh, that him. confidence that we've known, which brings me to I think, you know, what I wanted to talk about because people have. Uh, Firm given me some criticism for supporting a lot of the players that I've known since they were 16, 17 years old and watched their entire collegiate career. And the ones that I know are fantastic humans, like the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for the Cincinnati Bengals, Sam Hubbard, who is my personal favorite to have been watching on this whole run. And I have a lot of <coughs> former players that I still love to follow along, and I don't need to name them all, but I feel so happy for Sam Hubbard. Uh, obviously, Allie and her side of the family, they're all huge Bengals fans, so this run has been great, and I've been welcomed aboard that bandwagon for the last couple of years. So it's fun to see him and Eli Apple and Vaughn Bell and Joe Burrow and Isaiah Prince when he's uh, holding up on the hey, right side. No mm-hmm. sacks he's, yesterday. He's playing. Doing, yeah, he's, he's out he's there starting. playing well, much yeah. better than he did against Tennessee. But, of course, I love to support those guys because I've known them for years, and I'm, and I'm happy for them. So I was just wondering for Nicole or – might be tougher for Bob, but maybe not. After I have an answer. I know. <laughs> the, f- the former guys that you like to follow the most, the see them do well, root, support, whatever. Guys that you became fans of that you only favorite fans. Buckets. Only fans of. Only yes. fans of, yes. Not only haters. There's Nicole's going first. There's something to be said for, like, for what you were saying about <clears> – <throat> these guys you've known forever, when you know someone as a person and they're a great person, you love to see them succeed, you know? And so I, we were talking about this earlier and it is hard to narrow down because there are a few players we've met over the years. Um, But I think recently, and I have to say this, um, Billy Price. So we got to know him through uh, the Buckeye Cruise for Cancer and he loves roosters. Like to a point that he, um, Equals your passion? 
What? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Seriously. No. That's no. how much he loves it. Yes. His, his yes. cleats this year were some roosters, he, right? What? Didn't he wear roosters cleats or something this year yeah. for months? So that so he his love of roosters is absolutely unreal. Like any city he goes to that we have it, he's stopping to eat there. And this year he did the My Cause, My Cleat for the Roosters Foundation. And so just his like just his passion for our brand and to give back to us it just meant the absolute world and I you know I'm sad for him that the ba- I, it was a good thing that he moved to the Giants but you know with the Bengals going to the Super Bowl I wish he could have had that experience right. but you know he really enjoyed playing for the Giants this year so got a lot of playing time there he did he did so you know I, I love watching these guys have success you know Eli Apple his career arc didn't really go mm-hmm. probably the way that it he would have wanted it to, especially in New York, but had a good year with the Saints a couple years back, kind of resurrected his career, and he's played well for the Bengals this year. He's been one of the – like that, that's like a sneaky, underrated pickup for the Bengals in free agency. And, you know, and then Vaughn, obviously, you know, he's a physical guy there in the back end, and, and Sam is probably everybody's favorite because he's, he's such a great dude. Yeah. And to watch him shoot through there like a, an Apache mm-hmm. Indian on – on uh, oh. Pat Mahomes, like, yeah. fire away. Pat tried to give him a little juke, a little jive. Got him. And the only thing. <laughs> if he had recovered that fall. Oh, oh man. That's all, literally the only thing they say. The, like, don't take a sack, but definitely don't fumble yes, the football. Yes, exactly. That's yeah. the only yeah. way we can lose. Yeah. You get I mean, the ball away. He f- gave up a 15-yard sack and had the ball on the ground. <laughs> I mean, that was a great play by Hubbard. And he's spying yeah. it. So mm-hmm. what he was doing right there is usually they tell you, if you don't know, don't go. Like, don't attack until the quarterback gets out of the pocket and he's declared because if you commit and then get like caught up in the wash then we've defeated the yeah. purpose of what we're trying to do and sam read it like hey i'm uh, sure i'm shooting my like shot. 16 yeah. seconds yeah i'm waiting if there's if not now yeah. when yeah time to go <laughs> and made a great play and heck that almost that almost saved the game and ultimately i mean they didn't score a touchdown they had to kick the field goal and mm-hmm. go to overtime but watching those guys, and even Isaiah Prince, we joke around, like, he played well yesterday. He didn't give up any sacks. Right. He gave up one. The Bengals had four on Mahomes. You would have thought that would have been flipped. That's yeah. right. But it's, it's awesome. Like, this is why, like, I've lost fandom for teams because I just want to watch guys who I know mm-hmm. go out there who have worked really hard and you know their career arc and their story, and you want to make sure that they can go out there and have success. And watching that yesterday, like, I was texting with Sam last night, like it just, and especially Joe too. But like, it warms your heart just to see that because you know how hard it is to get there. My goodness, I mean, listening to Romo joke about dropping the snap at the end of the game, I'm like, I don't know if it's still too soon for some of your teammates, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting there watching that, and he's talking about, oh, just kick it now, just kick it now. I was like, you know, Tony, you're the guy who should know that's not a guaranteed thing. Well, Jim, I mean, there have been guys who can <laughs> make a hey, fumble snap. Mm-hmm. Right here. And Jim just glossed it on the first time, and then coming back and finally, he's like, I don't know if you heard me earlier, yeah. Jim, but you can there have been guys yeah. who have fumbled snap. I didn't really this. want to pile on at that point. Mm-hmm. Jay-Z? Yeah, it was just – you know, you get to. I got to meet a lot of these younger guys through the cruise, um, so you, it is fun to watch them. And just watching that game, I felt like I was a Bengals fan. I felt like I was on the bandwagon just because yeah. you get <laughs> guys that you've seen come up. You know, you know them. You get to know them a little bit here and there. And just, gosh, they were all over that game. I mean, Buckeyes had their handprints in in a, in a big win to get to the Super Bowl all throughout the game. Eli with the tackle before the half. You know, Sam with the rush at the end. You. Know, Bon Bell, Bell with the interception. Pick. I mean, Eli could have had – like, they were everywhere. And that's so cool, I think, as an alumni, just to see, like, our program is where it's at. We, I mean, we know where it is, but to see those guys going to the next level and and really just realizing their dream and, I mean, making it to the Super Bowl, it's just cool. And to have five of them on one team and, you know, then get to watch the next game and see Joe – or not Nick go, you yeah. know, against uh, the Rams. It's like, man, they're just everywhere. So it's a lot of fun to watch uh, these ex-Buckeyes and – you know, you just uh, keep rooting for them and hope they stay healthy and just keep keep going because it's, it's a lot of pride for the university, a lot of pride for the alumni guys who, who have played. And, you know, watching these guys continue that uh, that history of Buckeyes going to the league and, and making impacts. So. so one other thing, like, and you'll like this, Nicole. So we had my son's birthday party in here. Heck, it was probably was maybe seven, eight, Thanks, like four Bobby. or five years ago. <laughs> and I'll tell you this, like, and I had asked guys to come and different things. And, you know, you never know who's going to show up. They're young dudes. I mean, you guys know dealing with college guys. And uh, <laughs> Denzel and Damon both come, uh, Denzel Warren, Damon Arnett, and also Sam Hubbard and Billy Price sitting right here. They got a picture with all the kids. I came in and were, were unbelievably gracious and just phenomenal. And so, like, when you see those things, 
And like being in here, I completely forgot about that. As you start talking about Billy's love for roosters, it kind of jogged my memory. But like Sam coming in and doing all that stuff, and it's great to see like good things happen, you know, to good people, and, and to watch them ultimately hopefully have a chance to, you know, ho- hoist the Lombardi Trophy. It's something crazy. Think about it. my buddies brought up the other day because how about Sam Hubbard after he make that play? He's going to Notre Dame to play lacrosse. Yeah, and then, you know until Ur- Urban right? Urban comes in and gets him. At least that's what you know huh. was out there for a kid from Cincinnati. What an interesting story. Yeah. Did any, why didn't anybody write about that yeah. lacrosse or the dodgeball game? That's <laughs> the, dodge the dodgeball. Ball game. <laughs> I can't. Seems like people dropped the ball there. <laughs> Boy, I just I think it's important what you brought up <laughs> earlier, Austin, which is that people assume or get mad at us in the media because we support these kids and yeah. like root for them and like. Because it's somehow wrong to root for the kids that you like or that the people that you They've grow up. No, I don't. Years. I don't cover. The, I don't that? cover the NFL. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So like, it has that's my to chance to uh, root for them because yeah. we can't re- really root for them in college. So when they get to the NFL, it does mean something. And I, Sam is one of my guys that I just really like. And I remember when Sam. I want to meet someone who doesn't like Sam. When Robert. Sam and Billy started, that person can't be their right. time in Cincinnati. I talked to them both, and they were like, "Man." A lot of the guys here don't care if we lose. And so I know, like, how hard these last couple of years have been for Sam and, and Billy to a degree, just, like, changing the culture of, of their franchise and trying to make sure people understand that losing sucks and it doesn't matter if you're getting paid a lot of money to do it. It still sucks to lose. Um, so he's definitely one of those guys for me. And the other one who, unfortunately, is not going to be able to play in the Super Bowl is Jordan Fuller. Oh, who yeah. I, just, mm-hmm. I just think Jordan Fuller is one Great of those mm-hmm. people that everyone should – understand how different he is as a guy like he's just a really great guy but then terry i mean terry mclaurin's the other one so that, yeah. if we're talking about who, who, I, who if i'm watching guys in the nfl i'm like i'm rooting for them no matter what and terry mclaurin and jordan fuller are i'm not going to root for the rams sorry jordan but um, <laughs> you said rooting for him no matter what no matter he's not playing in the he's game he's not Bob. playing uh, football so because he's hurt i know he's hurt eric weddle's out there who's my age but uh, yeah, this is his it third does, game back right it does help the ones who actually <laughs> could you imagine yeah. get to the nfl and still reply hey, Bob, to you won't complain to yeah, playoffs like, <laughs> You, can you play tight end? The Bengals yeah. need one now. Here's the thing. It's one yeah. thing to go do it and play like a box position, like defensive line, offensive <laughs> line. To play safety against dudes like that, like he hadn't played in a, two years. It's insane. I mean, to go and, and be s- able to run and like not get and beat. Start him look, off with like a half a game and then it's like, oh, hey, you're going to play the entire next game. That that Thanks for coming unbe- is unbelievable. It is. Like, at his age, oh, the amount of games he's played, he's a freak. Nicole, Every, but everyone's answer should be Terry McClure. Well, that, for sure. I mean, he's an elite human. Yes. Yeah. Elite one, family. Yeah, one of the, one of the best I've ever been around. He's on the Mount Rushmore of, of favorite Buckeyes to cover uh, and going, going on to the next level. Nicole just has a short stay with us this week. She's extremely busy. <laughs> mm. She's got to go run another show. She's got to go yeah. tell Coach Holtman she's sad that Ivory drained yeah. the three. What a oh, game what that, a game was. that what was. What an ending. Oh, and we don't Jeez. talk a lot about Ohio State basketball on the show per Austin's demands. That's in his rider, <laughs> believe it or not. And we talk about it That's in the correct. green room. That's right. He's, he says no basketball. Green room. We don't talk about it in the green room either. It's not allowed in there. <laughs> like that's where my writer really the, takes effect. Yes, <laughs> the green room. This is why I I love college basketball because that game doesn't end your season. You get your doors blown off for thirty minutes, and then all of a sudden shots start to click, and it's bang. Here you are, twenty five seconds left. Kyle Young makes an incredible play to get the ball back. EJ Liddell hits that three, and you're like, mm. I cannot believe yeah, we're gonna happened. win. <laughs> <laughs> and then. The dude just made an incredible mm. play. Yep. And you can't be, like, mad about it. You, It's not – like, if you're a college football fan and your team loses, it ruins your day, your week. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if Buckeyes fans, it ruins – Your like, urban, your year. Your right. year, yeah. And so basketball, it's just kind of cool that you can lose a game that's a great game and it doesn't – it actually, you leave that game feeling good about your program because you're like, hey, you know what? They could have folded. They could have quit. And and when you go talk to Chris Holtman today, yeah. can you just let him know that Buckeyes fans appreciate that his basketball team doesn't quit? Yes. yes. Thanks. Yeah. Yes. Let him know that. Absolutely. Like, no, I don't. Him, I don't no, cover basketball. Live crew. I don't cover basketball, so I, I can be a Buckeye basketball fan, and it's not like against my code. Not against your code. Code, code of ethics. So uh, I don't know how th- thrilled Chris Holtman will be since his team also got down by twenty uh, in that that's game. That's the other but, part of that game. So I think <laughs> he Nicole, had to back. Nicole will have an interesting conversation down there. He had hundred wins though. He, last yeah. week wasn't that last yeah. week? Last week, and EJ Liddell reached uh, the oh, thousand, thousand point points. mark. So I sixtieth awesome. place. We talked basketball. I know full well what's <laughs> going on. I, I think this must be corn dog. Oh my Ooh. God. Mini corn dogs tomorrow. Okay, so two dollars yes. appetizer yes. Tuesday. Yes. 
nice side of mustard coming along with those mm-hmm. corn dogs. Mm-hmm. They're delicious. Dive in. Gotta Jay-Z's be, favorite condiment. Got to be ketchup. And in 13, you have 13 days to prepare for Super Bowl Sunday yes. and involve roosters. How can they do that? Um, they can place a carry out. You can place a carry out order. I believe we are doing our early bird special that has not been finalized mm. yet. And I okay. apologize, guys, but I will be able to give. Who's in charge uh, of marketing here, Nicole? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a sneak peek. It, there's there's a with- lot involved. There's a lot involved. So um, I'll be able to talk about it next week for sure. But um, yeah, come in and watch the game. I. I don't want to take up a table because I want to give them to our guests, but I really want to be in the store just to watch. We'll let you stand. And, let you stand and eat. Oh, I'll stand. <laughs> I'll stand. I'm. I would. I would feel so bad like taking up a table. Right. You know. So, um, but I just can't wait to see like the environment in there. I told you guys that one playoff game. There were men crying. Like, and it was. Oh, it was just amazing. And it wasn't because the, of the, the Raiders. It was the, Raiders, the new killer. No. It was the nuclear. The, the Raiders ranger. game. I didn't get emotional when that because, you know, you should win that game. Uh, but Listen to this guy. Here Thirty-one years. <laughs> no, because yeah, we should win that they game. Were the better, uh-huh. They were the better team. They were the home team. I mean, they, should, they, they were the division. Years, they were the division yeah, winner. The Raiders win were the wild card. They should have won that game. So I mean, it was exciting, and I'm glad that you know. Obviously, I'm happy that they ended that streak. But the la- <laughs> Tennessee, even I thought, was a good matchup for the Bengals. Oh. I mean, it. Unfortunately, it's yes. about 11 seconds. Optimistic berm, as I've yeah, always yeah, said. As always. Chiefs are a bad matchup. And yeah. I just want to make Bengals one fan. final point out there to you people. We got a lot more show. I bro. got a lot. No, this is a point I got to make because the TV up here, it's really driving me crazy. This entire morning, everything I see about this Bengals and Chiefs game is what did what went wrong for the Chiefs? For sure. What well, how, what what happened to Patrick Mahomes? The Bengals have outscored the Chiefs thirty four to six in the second half of their two mm. games in the last month. Tell them. And nobody's talking about hey, maybe the Bengals were actually good. Preach it. Mm. You know, maybe they're actually maybe. Good. They're in the Super Bowl. We're going to find out. That's a great point. I bet we'll probably get more Bengals <laughs> thoughts from Berm in the second half of the show when we come back on Letterman Live. It's presented by Roosters. It's a fun casual joint. Everybody knows that Roosters is a fun, casual joint, but the truth is, it is so much more. It's a quick stop on the way home to sit back and unwind. It's a front row seat to the big game. It's a place where you will always find a friendly face and the home of wings so big you won't believe it. It's your family's other dinner table. So yeah, we're a lot of things to a lot of people. Roosters, a fun, casual joint. Precision engineering, rigorous attention to detail. A Bryant Evolution heating system is so well designed, it's as much of a joy to install as it is to use. Good to go. For the dealer nearest you, visit Bryant.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back in to the Letterman Lounge, Letterman Live. We're finally going to get a chance today, long awaited, four new uh, full time assistant coaches on the staff. Uh, Ryan Day will introduce them and we'll get to hear from them, talk to them. And it's it's an exciting day for me because I think oh this is one boy. of the biggest parts of the offseason. I just talked about this with you on Friday, Bob, that, you know, what do you cover this time of year? What do you want to get into? For me, know who these guys are, what they're about. And I think that. For whatever stock people outside may put in press conferences, some, none, it doesn't matter to me, uh, and it's not a definitive judgment, but I think Berm will back me up here that when you go into that meeting room in the Woody and all the cameras are there and there's 50 media members, that doesn't happen almost anywhere else. And some people don't like that. They're not going to be able to handle the situation very well. They shrink from it. You mean others, like coaches? Coaches. When they come in and – Probably shouldn't be here then. Well – that's, that's in, sort of the litmus test. Seen that happen. <laughs> yeah. I think it is a fair litmus test. Who is shrunken away from this? I don't mind. I'm going to name names of who have embraced that moment. Maybe we can get into that part later. Okay, but yeah. The first time that Ryan Day walked in there, not intimidated by that, nailed He was the in the conference. NFL in Philadelphia where they throw that. batteries at you and you win. <laughs> there, there's, <laughs> no, there's no greater example of what Austin's talking about than the fact that when Ohio State hired Jeff Halfley, nobody had any idea really who he was. Yeah. And his first press conference, it was three minutes into it. And everyone in that room was like, "This guy is a dude. He's cap. You were captivated." And, and mm-hmm. it, you that it would take him literally three minutes before everyone watching, everyone in the room was like, "Okay, this was the right hire." And Halfley flat out killed it in that first press conference. And then that, you know, the, the whole year was you know a rocket yeah. ship from there. And I think that the the reason I put stock in it, 
A, I mean, I want to know who these guys are, and I'm potentially going to be covering and dealing getting with them extensively. Yeah, potentially. Getting to I mean, know yeah. all about yeah. you. Yeah. And that's important. You're going to ask Jim Knowles what his favorite vegan dish is? I'm sure someone will. Someone will, but it will not be me. Okay. I promise you. I'm not. <laughs> I don't care about uh, that part. Jim. The short list. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> when you're eating and you can't eat, eat the meat like we're eating right here. I mean, is there... Is there a dish out there that you might want to try? One that, one that I might. Kung Fu uh, tofu that, guy. Yeah. That you, yes. That you might, you might devour, so to speak. Uh, I love it. I hope that our guy asks that uh, question. Little he'll, tofu kung fu. He'll, he'll have a lot to say about that, which is why we love him. To oh, make no doubt about it. The, the king of digressions. Um, but now, I'll, now I've digressed. <laughs> I think. The I wanted the, the Tim May podcast to be called I Digress with Tim May. Just yeah. to be clear. True that was, true, true that was perfect. The, if you can't come into that press conference and explain who you are and what you want to achieve and accomplish and how you're going to do that, then for me, and I know that that's not a perfect like-for-like like situation with being in the meeting room or on the practice field, but I feel like there's got to be some carryover. Yeah. And you've got to be able to uh, express those thoughts and communicate clearly and confidently and all that stuff. and. Some coaches do that and some don't. Well, the old the saying in the NFL, it's like you can't fool the room. And it's gotten to that point a little bit in college now because guys, they're, they're very worldly. They see a lot. I mean, the social media yeah. is connected to everybody. You have a deeper window into this. and You can see guys operate and interact. And so if you can't go here – and fool a bunch of reporters, you're never going to be able to fool. Like You're never going to be able to talk to players because they're going to see through it a lot quicker, especially the veteran guys, because they're going to ask in-depth questions and start digging in on stuff. And so it, it'll be important for those guys to be able to come out and make sure, hey, this is what we're doing. Like you talk to, to Fry about this, hey, offensively, hey, what are we doing? What's your philosophy on four offensive tackles starting? I mean, see, like, hey. Mm -hmm. That's – I mean, those are real questions about this. Was this a detriment? What are the positives? What are the negatives? Is that something we're going to look to? It's about getting your five best on the field, regardless of position, or trying to kind of balance that with, hey, maybe there is some position uniqueness that each each group, a guard from a tackle to a center, might possess. That'll be fun for Fry to come in, right? <laughs> like just after that off season and the previous coach and that topic that's been so popular to break down, like. Here you go. This is what you're facing. I mean, maybe he'll be able to knock that out pretty quickly, but yeah. it's funny how that will be, you know, for a position coach, like, hey, be pretty critical of what happened to that last guy. Can you do the exact opposite? Because uh, if he answers it the other way, people aren't going to really like that, are they? Well, and here's yeah. the thing. I don't care if they like it or not. If it's what you believe, and you're like, hey, we could do that. If it doesn't work, we're going to try probably try mm -hmm. something else. Like, yeah. And that's yeah. the only thing. Like, hey, I – I don't disagree with not that. Not opposed that to trying things, yes. right? Yeah, you got to try new things every now and then. <laughs> Sometimes you throw it out there, and take it right back. Well, that's the whole point. It's about being authentic and understanding yeah. when you're on that when you're in that podium for the first time and you got all these cameras on you and this is live streaming on all these, you know, every 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 website. Who you are has to shine through in that moment because a lot of times, especially this time of year, a lot of the kids in this program haven't even dealt with these coaches yet. The coach's been on the road. Sure, yeah. So, they yeah, they've been on the road recruiting for the last 3 weeks. So a lot of these guys haven't even met their their full complement of players yet so it is an interesting time for us to just kind of get a feel of who they are because as you said you know if someone's being real up there or not and that's why again halfly sort of the the golden goose of this situation because it was so immediate that people are like wow this guy is he really is different um and now you just have to see you know Ryan Day's so big on staff alignment and how these guys all fit together, and some of that, or a lot of that, is personality and how well everyone gets along is just far into how you fit in the culture of the of – Well, that's why you got to feel like everybody fits because Ryan's the one making these decisions, right? He's going to say, all right, I want to bring this guy. I want to talk to him first yeah. before I make any of So going in and talking to you guys, well, I agree with you. It is a chance for them to make an impact. They've already made their impact on the guy that really matters, <laughs> you know, and he's the one that's saying, all right, I know the coaches that are here. I know the players we have. I know you now, and I, maybe not as well as I know everybody else, but I, I've had meetings with you. We've talked about your philosophies and how you like to do things. I think you're going to be a good fit. So, yes, it's nice if they come in today and they blow your socks off and yeah. you're like, man, this guy is so sharp, blah, 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 but – some of these guys just might not take it that serious. Right. Where you know they they might come in and say this is just going to be an introductory thing for an assistant coach. How crazy can it be? <laughs> I've already sold the big guy. You know, yeah. I just got to go do this lip service for these guys. Well, uh, I, you know, they might not take it as hey, serious. Now, they granted, they're probably ready to rock. Media. They're ready to rock because nowadays 
everything's online. Everything's going to get tweeted. They don't want to look dumb up there. So, yes, they will be prepared, but – what you know, if they, they look like the Adam job. Gase <laughs> looking around as if there's like a fly in the room that they're staring at? That would be fun to do just to <laughs> I, mess with people. I think the interesting thing about this particular group is how different everyone's yeah. situation mm-hmm. is because a guy like Justin. Exactly is our situation, right. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> because. Uh, perfect. That's a great segue. <laughs> Thank you. Football and crab cakes. Um <laughs> The you no, know, you got Tim Walton, right, who's been out of college football for the last thirteen years. You have Perry Eliano, who was sort of a name no one really had any idea about, and then all of a sudden he's replacing Kerry Combs and Justin Fry, who's a guy that everyone thought Ryan Day was going to hire mm-hmm. three three years ago. And you're like, wow, and you know Jim Knowles, who no one knows anything about the guy really, except he had a good defense. Except except he had a good defense. And he's a vegan. He's a vegan. Like that's all we know. So and he yelled different. a lot. Yeah. And he was the guy that every program in the country wanted to hire. Clemson yeah. wanted him. Penn State wanted him. Ohio State wanted him. So every one of these guys comes from a different sort of scenario, and I think it's pretty interesting just to see how they all fit together. And so the fit together is going to be key because I think Ryan went out and tried to get the best guys he could, and it's like, hey. And this is the argument of bringing guys in externally versus growing guys in organically. Clemson always promoting from within versus searching. And I think there needs to be a blend of that. If you have a guy, hopefully you can identify good play- coaches in-house and then grow them. Yep. But also sometimes you, know, you need to probably bring in some fresh ideas, especially if there's not someone there who could maybe do that specific job or task. It will be interesting. Like my guy Tim Walton, he's, he talks fast. And he's going to get it. He was a Buckeye here. I think Perry Aliano will get it as well. We cover Kevin Wilson. We're fairly used to <laughs> fast talk. Yeah, but Tim, dude, it's a whole – it's a, it's another level. He okay. can get going. Going to need to slow down the at transcript. The sideline is like, hey, whoa, whoa. Because <laughs> he'd get rolling. He'd get going quick. And he's got a lot of knowledge up there. But he, being from Ohio State, he understands what it's going to be like here. I would imagine that Perry Aliano being at Cincinnati – knowing what was going on down the road, we'll have some idea of the magnitude and gravity mm-hmm. of this. You know, and, and Jim Knowles is kind of the wild card because he's never really been at like one of these traditional mm-hmm. blue blood, the, the USC, the Bama, you know, the Ohio State, of Michigan, uh, Florida, where, Georgia, where when you get hired, there's 50 people there. You know, at, at Oklahoma State, probably wasn't like that. Duke probably wasn't like that. Yeah. And so this is going to be a whole new paradigm entirely for him. And he's a dude that's a little bit different. Not a lot of guys know a lot about him, you know, except for the fact he had a really good defense for the last couple of years at Oak, uh, Oak State. And he's a vegan. And, and he's a vegan. And that part of it. Who does yoga. That part of it. And, that I mean, obviously he's meeting with Ryan Day and he's getting paid $1.9 million a year. That That's obvious. Your job is important. But I think, and I'm not trying to put too much stock in it, but you walk into that room and you see 50 people covering the team. Well, that didn't happen at Duke. It didn't happen at Oklahoma State. It doesn't happen virtually anywhere else. And that starts to tell you the importance uh, to way more people outside of that room because we're obviously passing that along to the people that are going to be 100,000 in the horseshoe or a fan base with several million people. And like that's, I think, the realization that hits that obviously they know what the standard is, but then you're starting to get a real first glimpse at the expectations that everyone else has for you because none of us would be in there you are a mere vessel, passion. is what That's, you're trying to yeah. say I'm tr- to the public. I'm, a, I'm just trying to open the gate. Yeah. When well, he knows he's coming in to a to an area that has not been happy with the way that side of the ball has of been course. playing, correct? You know, so so he's got to be like, man, these guys might come after me today because I do things differently. Well, it's going to be hard to teach these kids to get them on the same path. He's probably going to come. He might come with a whole thing like, this is what we're doing. This is how I'm trying to implement it. We brought so and so and so and so because they have a lot of a little assistance. Yeah, they they keep hiring and plucking from different places to, to in my head, help them teach this new defense and and teach this new philosophy to these guys. So, I mean, he he's got to be ready to rock because he he's got to know you guys are coming hard for him. Just to say, <laughs> hey, what what is this going to look like? Rule number seventy six. That's, that's the only way to today. come when you're coming at a coach. Oh, huh. aggressively. Aggressively. That's all he knows. He's a yeller. <laughs> I'm just going to move on from that. I think that's the safest play. Bobby's biting his tongue over that can't, here. Yeah, you can't say anything around this guy. <laughs> it's dangerous. Um, Berm, what's <laughs> happening on Wednesday? Uh, signing day. Ooh. It's so Big different, time. man. Like, I was having a conversation with someone on Sunday, and like, oh, signing day's this week. You, are you, you ready? I'm like, for what? <laughs> Nothing to do. Buckeye signed 20 kids on December 15th, and – here we are heading into this week. They have 
two commitments that are unsigned right now in Carson Hinsman and Omari Abor. There's no drama expected for either. Uh, it's Monday, so we got signing day on Wednesday. They're still trying to get a final answer out of Georgia four-star defensive lineman Christian Miller. That's pretty much Ohio State or Georgia. Um, and that's it. There's no more drama. There's hmm. no nothing. Uh, signing day in February, which used to be, honestly, my Super Bowl, yeah. uh, is now kind of not. Uh, now you have, have, now you have the real Super yeah, Bowl. We don't even have a, we're not even going to have a Ryan Day press conference on Wednesday on signing day, uh, you know, which is pretty pretty wild. Not a lot of drama, though, which is good because it means yeah. that people don't have to – Stress. That's not because of national. Well, I know, but it's but also you know tied in. Normally, they feel like he's still going to do his coach's show for. You'd national. figure they'd throw Pantone or someone up there and say, "Hey, it's signing day, right?" <laughs> throw Pantone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that's does. somebody who loves to Just be out good. there. Yeah, 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 I know how much Mark. I know Mark for sure really enjoys he's chomping at the bit to get out there for that. Yeah. yeah, why don't you, why don't you ask him if that's what he wants yeah. to do on Wednesday? I, I wouldn't. I don't think I have to ask. Okay, he's probably loving this Wednesday. Yeah, it's easy for him, huh? It's a real change, and yeah, Berman, I talked. Uh, to Ryan Day about this in December, like I don't feel like the calendar is great for college football with the way it's structured right now, and you've, that's why you've seen the volume of coaching carousel moves in September, and even. the timing of them, yeah. and the mm-hmm. timing for all that, and not working out, and then players wanting to leave, and the impact of name, image, and likeness in the portal. Like I don't know that December wound up being the right time for that, but Ryan Day does not want it to move. Ohio State's been very successful at it for one, and for two, he just feels like, all right, well, they found something, and every time the NCAA decides to make a change, there's more unintended mm-hmm. consequences. But, I mean, clearly, Ohio State has made an emphasis on getting things done in December, getting as many early uh, enrollees as they can. Which is, the number is 11, Berm, is that right? Yep. 11. And then if you can, you know, get a clearer picture of what your roster looks like and, and add to it in February, you supplement there. But that's a, that's a big change from what you guys went through and what college football has been for a long time. It's, could you see them moving signing day back, like pushing it back a week or two, and then having like a transfer period? Just, I feel like they, no the basketball model where you can sign in the summer August. before the season I like that. is mm-hmm. better. And it then really you, should be August 1st and then February 1st or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, But pushing it back so that you could have January being portal season to where that has mm-hmm. to be wrapped up like – After bowl season. Whatever. You you have, guys and, do it, with it. and it pretty much does. I think there's like – Guys can make their decisions in late January or February or whatever, but if you're going to p- take part in spring ball, there is a deadline that you have to be enrolled in. in it hasn't, it's not stopping Caleb Williams. That's what I was going to oh. say. He still hasn't committed yet. Uh, I can't speak to how that policy will work at every other school mm-hmm. or, if, or if he wants to go to sp- tell you this. play spring The policy camp. works based on how good you are. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's how the policy yeah, works. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I policy changes. I know Ryan Day was against the idea of moving the early signing period, and I, the idea of unintended consequences isn't lost on me. But at the same point, the kids who are signing in December, there is no, there is no value for these kids signing on December fifteenth, at this point. So, mm-hmm. because coaches, I mean, we used to have to wait until February fourth to find yeah. out who was getting fired. Right, now it doesn't matter. Everyone's moving it up anyway. August first to me. Yeah, I, mean, I like that. The kids, the, season. the yeah. kids who are, CJ, yeah, they're in one hundred percent. CJ Hicks, a kid from Ohio, who knows he's not going anywhere else. Signed that way, he can have constant communication with the staff. Mm-hmm. Means he can do a lot of different things. He can start getting his workout program. He can start a lot of the other stuff. There's just no value to me in having it on December fifteenth. It's just stupid. It, it, number one, you're in the middle of finals. You're in the middle of bowl prep. You're in the middle of everything else going on. Uh, the holidays. It's just a bad time to do that. I can agree. Sure. Yeah. All right. No argument. Should have concurred. We can just argue about the Big Ten stupidly trying to play an eight game conference schedule again. Nope. Better idea. Better idea. No, it's not. I, you're in the minority. You're, you are in the minority on that. Well, tell me why then. Because Unless they're bringing back the legends and the leaders. If you're, I don't want to talk about it. If you're trying to crown a true champion, you should play as many conference cares, games as possible. Uh, who cares, why? Because you, you're going to get in the same argument about who should actually be in the game. If you take one more piece of the puzzle away, and you have more unbalanced schedules because of 14 teams, and then you go to eight games, then we're going to have arguments that aren't even about the rankings. They're just about who should be in the championship. But if you well, remove the, the divisions, the, then it doesn't matter. You eliminate the divisions. That take the highest makes team. it worse. No, it because, doesn't. Yes, Not it for does. Ohio State, it doesn't. No, they're still going to be one or two. I, mm-hmm. I don't care about anybody else. My goal is to, to get the Big Ten to, Championship game. They're going win. to expand the college football playoff. It is going to happen. How it looks – and the, and the the parameters around it, that remains to be seen. But it will get expanded. And it's going to get expanded to 12 because the SEC is not going to be allowed to expand unless it goes that far because there's no benefit to them for going to six eight. or eight. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's going to get to 12. 
and a function of playing eight games allows for less cannibalization. It'll be more. It'll probably guarantee three Big Ten teams get in each year, and in doing that, that is infinitely more money that will then be poured into the coffers of the Big Ten. And if you're only they actually make they actually will make less money that way by playing fewer conference games. And then if you're adding alliance, they will get three games, three teams into the playoff, which you're getting fifty, sixty million dollars from those. That's that's going to come regardless. Not if you don't make the teams and you get so it per, the, per per team that enters. The Big Ten has been in position to put more teams in than the SEC in that system, by pl- even in the nine-game conference schedule. They're not going to lose that. And if you're guaranteed one spot every single year and you're making it more challenging to even name who's going to do that, you're, you're creating other issues that make no sense because the games that they're talking about replacing these conference with are going to be horrible matchups against, like, Duke and Oregon State. So you should at least put some value on it to your television partners, which that is what's going to be on the table here for 2023 for the Big Ten. And if you want to make that value go up, saying that you're going to play more games against Wake Forest instead of the teams I don't, that I don't know that league, that's actually going to happen and manif- manifest itself the way that they're saying. Though. The way that it is going, they are talking about two to three games against Alliance teams. And if you're sacrificing Big Ten games for that, and making the conference championship race more complicated with unbalanced intra-league schedules, that is ridiculous and stupid and won't accomplish anything. What is the Big Ten? I'll tell you this. Isn't ridiculous or stupid. Cutting out, <laughs> cutting out playing Rutgers in Maryland and teams but like that. But you're replacing this with, with freaking Wake Forest. Are we sure about that, though? Yes. I mean, that's, I, I, until I see that that's inked in where that game will be replaced by a team – but what if it's not Wake Forest? What if it's Clemson? What if it's a Florida USC. State? What if it's a USC? Those the, the, they're going to it'll be more of a Big Ten ACC. Well, you just said you were worried game. about cannibalizing the Big Ten. Why would you want to put because all the big games on Ohio State's schedule? Because they can win those games, and it's not a zero sum. You realize if fourteen teams play each other, that it has to be seven and seven. If you play fourteen teams from other conferences, you have the ability to go fourteen zero. You have the ability mm-hmm. to go on fourteen as well. And if you have if you eliminate the divisions and you get three Big Ten teams in the playoff, losing to Clemson or USC early in the season isn't not gonna ending. It's not gonna, yeah, it's not going to matter as much. There's well, a lot of arguments. You guys are, are ignoring the fact that the ACC and the Pac-12 don't have enough good teams to both. Bo- and they can play schedule. our trash teams, and they'll beat them. It'll be great. <laughs> our trash teams are better than their trash teams. I yeah, do know true. that. The way that, I watch that Rutgers every bowl play, season, right? the way that I watch Rutgers play Wake Forest – after not practicing for three <laughs> weeks, and Wake Forest being the second best team or third best team in the ACC, I feel pretty confident about that. Oh, it's sad that I have to say that all three of you guys are wrong, but that's just the way we're going to have to end this show. <laughs> thanks to Nicole Cox and Roosters for having us for Letterman Live. Uh, thanks to me for finally getting the last word and just yeah, crowding myself the king of this argument. That's Jay Z, <laughs> Bobby Carpenter, Jeremy Birmingham. King Appreciate Nicole Cox. We will see you next week for Letterman Live. It is brought to you by Roosters. It's a fun, casual joint.